mean, I think most of the members of parliament from the opposition previously was going in through the no normal route, our entrance on the left side of the house. So everyone is like, no, 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 wrong side. <laughs> Do you remember the moment you were inspired to go into politics? The most crucial moment was the night of the arrest of my father, 1998, 20th September. Because I was never uh, forced to face a, you know, a real gun uh, pointed at my siblings. I told myself then, there's no way I would live my life in fear. I could not run away from the transgressions that have taken place against my country, against human rights, against political and civil liberties of many Malaysians. I think that helped push um, a deeper awakening, whether it's my work with Suaram, Abim, Islamic Youth Movement, human rights and political and civil liberties in general. So you've referred to yourself as a reformist. What does reform mean to you? And how do you think we can achieve that? The root word, Islah Masata'atum. You improve the current conditions, ensure it gets better, whether it's the process, whether it's the system. So when you talk about reforms, you know, we have to be relevant to the needs of the time. So whether it is the um, political system to ensure there's sufficient check and balances, um, you ensure that you have a working and, and vibrant opposition which exists alongside the government of the day, um, whether it is a judiciary. Remember the appointment of judges. All these things must be done in accordance with the rule of law. And similarly with the media, as the fourth estate, we feature uh, politicians across the political divide without fear or favour. Reforms must be the basis of which we uh, perform our work and, and fulfil our responsibilities. Can you bring us back to the, to the polling day or polling night? Uh. Yeah. Was there a particular moment where you realised this, this is actually happening? Well, my first time I brought my son with me, Harris, he's like, Wow, Mama, I didn't know Ka'adlan is winning so many seats. And then when Puncak Borneo, when Puncak Borneo fell into uh, Ka'adlan's hands, then we knew something was up because a seat like that showcases this huge tectonic uh, political shift um, in favour of Pakatan Harapan. I knew then that we were looking at a change of government at the federal level and that was um, really very surreal. What do you think about political participation among young Malaysians today? You know, I continue to learn from their love and fervour for volunteerism, the degree of which they are also uh, part and parcel of this election process. 82% of a turnout rate on election day, many of which are young people, it is something to be celebrated. And the process is not easy, mind you. Why? Because it takes forever to be part of the electoral roll. I mean, it's not like America, where you can immediately register and vote on the same day. No way, Jose. I always believe that we have to be um, less condescending and more embracing of the young. The fact that uh, more than 50% you know, presented but the young, um, I think it's uh, something astounding. Uh, why do you think uh, yeah. female participation in Malaysian politics is still relatively low? Because the most important thing about empowerment is the right to choose. So ensure that environment is conducive for them, whether it's through flexi work policy or it could be in more childcare centres. I try to very much shape the, the environment, the political scene to fit the role of a woman. But there are moments where I felt it's quite challenging uh, when you're bringing up two children in, in, in the world today. So whatever it may be, uh, I think more awareness. Uh, it was reported that you did not want a cabinet position. Can you tell us why? Yes, it was reported. So, And I'm retired to address this issue. I think I've addressed this uh, 1,001 times. And I said that uh, regardless of, of what was reported, I continue to do my work, whether it's through my, you know, uh, call to action, whether it's through the TVET committee. I want to make sure that the activists in me will always live on regardless. So sometimes, you know, even for ministers in cabinet, they do not dictate the future of policies because they have to be representatives of our voice. They have to fulfill pledges and programs that benefit us. So I think to that end, it's always good uh, to keep an open mind, whether in or outside cabinet. Is Pakatan Harapan concerned about naming a prime minister in waiting who has not been democratically elected? 
I think right now we are a coalition that has been very committed to fulfilling our pledges, including our akad, our promise to each other. Now this is very important because that meant the bulk of those who voted in have adhered and supported uh, a set of, of uh, you know, uh, policy moves and decisions to guide us moving forward. And that's how I see it. So when, for example, there were questions and suggestions that another Prime Minister be chosen other than Tun Mahathir Mohamad, it was clearly rejected because, again, you are only worth your word. Malaysia's first female Deputy Prime Minister will be stepping down to, in a way, accommodate the Prime Minister in waiting. Are you concerned about the message that might send to the Malaysian public? This is really more of the assumptions that are being made in this interview rather than what's taking place. But there has been talk that uh, the Deputy Of course, Prime there are going to be transition, but right now, it all depends in terms of the timing, in terms of whether you have finished uh, the key responsibilities and roles you were assigned for, and this was not even in discussion now. That's my response to you. So I cannot hypothetically answer when uh, the focus, of course, other than the party elections, has been to ensure the Deputy Prime Minister performs uh, her role accordingly. This was something that was asked to your father recently. Are you Malay first or Malaysian first? We are all Malaysians, and that's how we have to accept it, embrace it. Doesn't mean that I'm not proud of my Malay heritage. Doesn't mean I'm not proud of my Malay identity and my culture and where I came from, my fatherland, Permatang Pau. These are part and parcel of who I am. But we are about nation building. We're about, you know, convincing my children that this country loves them and they have to love this country equally in return. And we need to really um, you know, drive home that fact in, 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 a, in a climate that's often polarised on, on many issues and many, many fronts.